Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muff and Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, Skincare Nerd, and Pigmentation Monster. My skin loves producing pigment, and I live in sunny Australia, so obviously sun protection is one of my big obsessions. A good sunscreen is one of the most important things you can use to prevent pigmentation, so things like sunspots, and to help you fade acne marks. To understand sunscreen, you need to know about UVA, and so that's the topic of today's video. If you like this sort of video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you hit the notification button so that you don't miss out on any videos. So first up, what is UVA? The sun emits three main types of light. There's UV, which is ultraviolet, there's visible light, which we can see, and there's infrared or IR. I've talked about what visible light can do to your skin in a previous video, and today we're going to be focusing on the big kahuna, which is UV. UV light is divided into three major types. This is according to how much energy they have, which is inversely proportional to their wavelength. In other words, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. The shortest wavelength, highest energy light is UVC. This has wavelengths of 100 to 280 nanometers. Since it's the most energetic, it's the most harmful. Luckily, it's also the least penetrating. It's almost completely blocked by the atmosphere and the ozone layer, so you don't really need to worry too much about it. The next type is UVB, which is from 280 nanometers to 315 nanometers. This is probably the type of UV you've heard about the most. About 90% of the UVB that the sun produces gets absorbed by the ozone layer, which is 25 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This means that for Australians and other people who live close to the South Pole, it's a bigger issue because there's an ozone hole above Antarctica, which means that it lets in more UV light. We also have really nice sunny weather, which means we're more likely to be outside. UVB causes sunburns and skin cancer, but luckily it is mostly blocked by glass. It's also the type of UV from the sun that's involved in vitamin D production. UVB is the strongest in summer and in the middle of the day. It's mostly what's measured by the UV index, which you can look up on your local weather site. Finally, we have UVA, which is from about 315 to 400 nanometers. This is the lowest energy since it has the longest wavelength out of the different types of UV light. It has slightly shorter wavelengths than visible light. UVA penetrates the atmosphere better. It's about 95% of the UV that reaches the Earth's surface. And it also penetrates deeper into your skin than UVB. The main impact of UVA on your skin is that it forms highly reactive free radicals in your skin which have unpaired electrons. This means that they're really good at reacting with whatever's around, like your DNA. UVA causes wrinkles and sun damage in your skin, as well as deadly melanomas. It's the type of UV that you'll find in tanning beds and in black lights. Like with UVB, UVA levels depend on the time of day and the time of year, but compared to UVB, it varies a lot less. That means it's important to think about UVA protection even during off-peak times as well. UVA is further subdivided into UVA1 and UVA2. UVA1 has longer wavelengths, so it's above 340 nanometers. UVA2 has shorter wavelengths, it's closer to UVB, and it's below 340 nanometers. The main reason that UVA is less famous than UVB is that the dangers of UVA weren't really known until relatively recently. UVA's effects are also less immediate, and they build up over time which means that it's sort of more dangerous. UVA's ability to penetrate deeper than UVB is also quite scary. So it can penetrate through glass like the glass in your car's side windows, which is why there's lots of asymmetric skin cancers emerging as well as asymmetric wrinkle patterns. So for example, there's a famous photo of a truck driver. He drove a truck with the windows closed for about 28 years. The left side of his face received direct sun, the right side received indirect sun and you can see the massive difference in wrinkles. Even if you never go to the beach and you never sunbathe, you can still be affected by UVA. It's been estimated that about 80% of UVA damage actually comes from everyday life. So things like if you're walking around, if you're driving, or even if you're sitting near a window. Now let's talk about sunscreen. Sunscreens almost always have an SPF rating. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor, and the higher the SPF, 
the higher the protection you have against erythemal UV. In other words, UV that causes your skin to burn. SPF mostly measures protection against UVB, although shorter wavelengths of UVA will also cause burning, about 9-20% to of the reaction. If you have a sunscreen that only blocks against UVB, you can actually only get an SPF of 11, so there is UVA protection shown in the SPF. The concept of SPF was introduced in 1970, before all of this UVA research. And so, back then, scientists assumed that the only damage you could get to your skin was sunburn. And so that's what we protected ourselves against using sunscreens. I've talked more about SPF and whether or not higher SPFs are better in a different video which I've linked below. The problem with SPF is that it doesn't really tell us that much about protection against longer wavelengths of UV, especially that UVA1. Because we now know that UVA is also dangerous, a lot of countries have introduced other regulated terms in sunscreens that describe how much UVA protection you're getting. The most popular term is something called broad spectrum. There are a few slightly different ways of measuring it. The first method is using something called critical wavelength. The ability of the sunscreen to absorb UV is measured over different wavelengths. And for a sunscreen to be classified as broad spectrum under this critical wavelength criteria, 90% of the total area under the absorption curve, from 290 to 400 nanometers, needs to be higher or equal to 370 nanometers. The other criteria that's sometimes used for broad spectrum is that the UVA protection factor has to be at least one third of the labelled SPF. In Australia and the EU, both of these have to happen before a sunscreen gets the broad spectrum rating. In the US, broad spectrum sunscreens only need the critical wavelength criteria. What this means is that in general, a higher SPF is going to give you better UVA protection. Australian and EU sunscreens also give you better guaranteed protection than a US sunscreen. That's because critical wavelength does tell you about how wide the protection is, so the broad spectrum, but it doesn't tell you that much info about how much protection you're getting, so in other words, how strong that protection is. One recent study did find that US sunscreens give less protection than the sunscreens that require both critical wavelength and the one-third SPF rule. Out of the 20 sunscreens tested in this study, 19 of them passed the US test, but only 11 of them passed the EU regulations with the extra one-third SPF requirement. In some other countries, there's more specific UVA protection ratings. There's the PPD rating, which stands for Persistent Pigment Darkening. This measures how well a sunscreen protects you against a long-term tan that's caused by UVA. It's basically the equivalent of SPF, but for UVA. You'll often find PPD ratings in European sunscreens. There's also the PA rating. This is pretty similar to PPD, but it uses plus signs, and it's more popular in Asian countries. PA plus roughly translates to PPD 2 to 4. PA double plus is PPD 4 to 8. PA triple plus is PPD 8 to 16. And PA quadruple plus is PPD 16 and above. Unfortunately, PA ratings don't tell you how far above PPD 16 a sunscreen might be. Another way of checking if you're getting good UVA protection is by looking at the actual sunscreen ingredients. Most sunscreen ingredients don't give great protection against longer wavelength UVA1. These curves show you the protection ranges. A higher line means higher protection, but higher percentages of that sunscreen ingredient will give you higher protection so the curve will go up. So in terms of the relative protection, it doesn't tell you that much, but it does tell you the breadth of protection. The best UVA1 protective ingredients for a long time were avobenzone and zinc oxide. Avobenzone, or BMDBM, gives really good protection, but it's photo-unstable, which means it breaks down in UV light. So if it's on your skin, it might stop protecting you for a while unless it's been stabilized. Zinc oxide gives you pretty flat protection throughout the different wavelengths, but the problem is it has really low protection, which means that in a sunscreen what you need is a really high percentage to lift that curve up. And the problem with higher percentages is that a lot of the time the sunscreen feels gross and it gives you a white cast. You can see the white cast from these three sunscreens that I've tried in the past. There are now some newer sunscreen ingredients that aren't really that new, but they give better protection and they avoid these issues with avobenzone and zinc oxide. They're longer lasting because they're photostable, so they don't break down in UV. 
and they're really effective so you don't need to have too much inner sunscreen to give you that high protection. Unfortunately, most of these aren't available in the US unless you import a sunscreen from overseas. These are the best longer wavelength UVA protective ingredients. There's Tinosorb S, which is abbreviated as BEMT, Tinosorb M, which is MBBT, Mexoral XL, which is DTS. This is patented by L'Oreal and it's found in La Roche Posay products. There's also Uvinyl A, or DHHB, Mexoral SX, or TDSA, and there's Near Heliopan AP, or DPDT. Some of the older, more traditional sunscreen ingredients will also block against UVA too. So for example, oxybenzone, octocrylene, and titanium dioxide. How much protection you get also depends a lot on the formulation, so make sure you check the regulated terms as well, so the SPF, the PPD, the words broad spectrum, as well as looking for these ingredients. If you're interested in learning more about how to pick a good sunscreen, I've written a skincare guide which I've linked below. It also talks about how to pick a good cleanser and a good moisturiser and how to set up a skincare routine. As you can probably guess by now, sunscreens aren't the best type of sun protection. A lot of them don't have the best UVA protection, you need to reapply them regularly, and it's really easy to miss a spot or apply too little. But we do have some other options as well. Sun protective clothing is a really good option, so things like hats and sunglasses and shirts. Hats are really good for protecting your scalp, which is an area that most of us tend to miss. You should also try to stay in the shade and avoid sun exposure at peak times. UV that's been reflected off a surface onto you will still cause damage, but a lot less than the direct UV, so you can see that from the truck driver photo. You can also look into adding UVA tints on windows that you go near a lot. You don't need to worry too much about the windshield because they're already designed to block UVA. I hope you liked this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for more beauty science and check out my blog as well. See you next time for more nerdery.